So my name is Murray Hitzman, and my favorite part of working towards the sustainable future is interacting with all the researchers in the iCrag Center, both those younger and those older. Welcome to SUG's Seismic Sound Off, conversations with geoscientists addressing the challenges of energy, water, and climate. I'm your host, Andrew Gary. In this episode, Murray Hitzman, the director of iCrag, highlights the energy transition and how to communicate it with the public. iCrag is the Science Foundation Ireland Research Center in Applied Geosciences. Murray explains Ireland's advantageous position in addressing the energy transition and its untapped geothermal energy potential. He shares his journey as an economic geologist and how it has shaped his vision for iCrag's three grand challenges, earth system change, earth resources, and earth science and society. Listeners will discover the connections between the energy transition, critical raw materials, and societal engagement necessary to build a sustainable future. This conversation is a reminder that sustainability is a multifaceted issue that requires collaboration, innovation, and a willingness to embrace new challenges. As Murray puts it, discovery is at the heart of this journey, continuing to uncover how we can better interact with our planet. Please check out the show notes to learn more about iCrag and find all the links referenced in this episode. And now, let's get to my conversation with Murray Hitzman. Well, I'm excited to speak with you, Murray. I think this is going to be a new organization and kind of a new world for a lot of our listeners. So it's exciting to share what you're doing uh, in Ireland here with our listeners, because of course it, it matters to people all over the world, the work that you're doing. It, it impacts everyone. Let's start with what led you to focus your expertise and energy on solving the energy issues in Ireland. Right. Well, well, after being named director of, of ICRAG in 2018 and moving back to Ireland, basically, I saw that focusing on Ireland's energy issues really was a primary area where the center could have a real positive impact for the nation. So you, you, were, you were kind of feeling like within this confines of one country, you could really make a difference on, the, on these issues in particular. Correct. And Ireland actually is, is spectacularly placed to deal with this issue. It's the size of the society and its location on the globe, right, where it actually sits in the North Atlantic. So, yeah, a lot of things came together. Let's dig in a, a little bit of iCrag and their work. What are the three areas of focus for the organization? Right. So we have three grand challenges. One is earth system change. A lot of people would say climate change. We look at it a bit more broadly. Earth resources and earth sciences and society. What was your background and expertise in the field of geosciences that led you down this path? So I'm what's technically called an economic geologist, which most people wouldn't have a clue what that means. So I'm a geoscientist basically focused on understanding the formation of Earth's resources, things such as metals or building materials, right, and how they can be sustainably produced. So when you when you're talking the the economic part is actually using the stuff in the in the earth for some kind of financial or business benefit in a way, basically using earth resources for society, right? I think that's probably the best way to think about it. Yep. Uh, Icrag talks about when they're securing resources for this sustainable society, they're looking at these two research energies: energy transition and raw materials. Kind of just what you were talking about there. How do these two areas, this energy transition and raw materials, how do those areas complement and interact with each other to move towards this sustainable society? Right. Well, so the energy transition obviously includes using technologies such as wind energy or solar power, and these require critical raw materials for the construction of the actual devices which get the energy, right? So decarbonization requires both renewable energy and critical raw materials. And another one for, for Ireland specifically is Ireland also has potential for geothermal energy, another renewable type energy. So in addition to the raw materials required to enable geothermal energy production, just like the others, you need to build them with something. It's also necessary to understand the subsurface, what's underneath the, the land surface of Ireland, because that's where the geothermal energy is, right? 
that's also where the Earth's resources are, <laughs> which we need to actually build the stuff. So ICRAG, another big part of it, which ties all these together, is understanding the subsurface of the country of Ireland. Suppose it's convenient that all of these things are located in the subsurface <laughs> to work together. You know, one of the areas that you are an expert in as well is metals. You know, so zinc, copper, cobalt. What are the importance of those metals and others in creating this sustainable green future? So all these technologies that we need to, to deploy, actually, those technologies require those metals as well as a host of other metals as well, right? So it's not just one metal, it's, it's really the periodic table. And not only the periodic table, but, but also building materials. <laughs> so, you know, we need to get a, a sustainable infrastructure. And in Ireland, you know, housing crisis, blah, 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 we don't have enough buildings for people to live in. So how are we gonna build new buildings or retrofit old buildings? Where do we get the concrete, the stone, the gravel? the sand. It sounds, you know, most people don't think about those things, but they're also critical earth resources and we need to, again, produce them sustainably. Yeah, it's a good point. To, a good lead into the next question of most people don't understand where these resources are coming to build a house, to build a road, and getting the community on board, getting people on board with this energy transition is an important aspect of it. So what do you see as some of these challenges in communicating with the public about your scientific work around sustainability. Right. Communication is the key word, and language, obviously, is how we communicate. And uh, as a scientist, especially a geoscientist, we have uh, an incredibly complex and words that no one understands. And why would they, right? So we have to translate what we do technically into language that's easily understandable by citizens, by everybody, right? That's a critical thing that we need to do. And and I must say that most scientists and engineers don't do it very well. And it also works both ways. We need to communicate with the citizens, but we also need communication means going both ways, right? So the scientists, our people at ICRAG, need to listen to and understand what citizens are saying and what they're concerned about. So it really does need to be two-way communication through language that we both can agree what we're meaning. If you had a, a magic wand and could get the public to understand one thing about the future around Earth systems change, what what would it be? So, so this is me personally, and, and probably it wouldn't be everybody in my center for sure, but to me, it's the societal aspects of the energy transition. How do we actually move towards greater societal understanding of what's required to achieve the goals of decarbonization? You know, we were talking before we, we hit record here, you know, this organization is in Ireland. Why is Ireland a particularly good place to learn how science and society interact to apply to other countries? So I think it's actually a really good area for several reasons. One, it's a relatively small country. Okay, it's not, Ireland's not huge, which means that, that we actually have interaction among a huge number of the citizenry. We actually know each other fairly well or can have the ability to do that. And the government, the Irish government has actually done a lot of initiatives in the last decade of having citizen communication in governance, et cetera. So, so just from a place to do this, it's great. From a scientific place, Ireland is situated, little island, sitting off in the North Atlantic. The North Atlantic is probably what's driving a huge amount of the climate change on the planet. So we're scientifically in a great place to be able to do it as well. And Ireland, it's a non-aligned country. I mean, it's European, but it has great ties to North America, right? It's not aligned. We don't fight anybody. <laughs> we fight ourselves too often, but that's different than that. So there's just a lot of pieces that come together to make it a really good place, proper place to do this. Easier maybe than several than other parts of the world. Is there a common misconception that people have when they think about a sustainable future? And I'd, I'll kind of split this up maybe if you think there is a difference among scientists and then among public, if you think both of those maybe have the same misconception or maybe different, a common misconception. So I haven't thought about it between the two groups. What I, what I really think is that, that the biggest misconception is that it's too hard or too difficult, right? There's just, we can't deal with it, right? Yeah, throw your hands up. Right, exactly. 
But building a sustainable society requires everybody, all the citizens, to do a whole bunch of myriad of different things, many of which are minor, right? They don't have to be all earth shattering, as well as helping to support the big things. Is it really hard and difficult? Yeah, it is. But is it so hard and difficult we can't do it? No, it's not. Looking at it as too hard is is the one misconception that I think we need to get get beyond. Not to throw too much uh, water on, on the fire with this one, but on the flip side of that, do you feel like there is something oversimplified about the, the green energy transition? Probably many things, but one that, that is driven primarily at a national, international level, right? So in the last, past couple of weeks, big focus on COP. COP was great. You know, we have to do those sorts of things. Is COP important? Will it have important ramifications? I think it probably will. Will it affect everybody immediately? Probably will not, <laughs> right? So the green transition has to occur at all these levels from individual level, you and I, whether we flush our toilet X times a day, whether we turn off the lights. I mean, really simple things, right? To the planetary scale. I mean, I'm a geoscientist. I think about the planet, right? That's the whole point. And all these things are interconnected. So whether I flush my toilet and 20 times a day as opposed to two or something, right, is connected with how much water we have going forward. So we need to actually think about this mirroring the Earth system itself, right? And that's why I think geoscientists are such key players in the energy transition. Geoscientists, what we're supposed to be doing is thinking about the planet, right? How the planet works, what's its history, how did it get to where it is, how's it changing, <laughs> And climate change is only part of the changes, right? But but that whole intricacy and complexity is necessary. And then how do we communicate that in a way that makes sense to other people? Because they don't need to understand that complexity as such, right? I mean, that's, I've been trained for many, many years to do it. That's what I do. Why should I think somebody else, you know, would needs that? They don't. They need to do what they do. Yeah, they want to take away. I kind of I remember speaking to someone who worked on earthquake preparedness, and they don't need to know all of the scientific reasons they need to do X. They just need to know to do X. Right. Is there something you would like to know about this issue that you currently do not know? <laughs> Where do I start? Every day we learn something that suggests new questions. So just in the last week, right, Copernicus has told us that last year was the warmest year in recorded history, period, right? That's a big deal. Okay, so why is that? What's driving it? Is it just what's happening in the atmosphere? Is it actually the tipping point in the oceans? Here in Ireland, the oceans off our, our shores were the hottest ever, you know, this last year. I mean, unbelievably warm. Is it cleaning up air pollution, which is increasing atmospheric warming? So again, there's a lot of research suggesting that, you know, having less pollution from, from the ocean going vessels is changing the clouds. Right. And that's actually, again, changing how much warmth is being trapped by the atmosphere. So all these are really important questions. I don't know the answers to any of them. Right. Some of our researchers are actually focused on a number of those different issues. But to me, what issues don't we know? What 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 do we actually know? <laughs> Might be a better way of actually saying it. You know, what is the scale? Uh, you mentioned researchers at ICRAC working on things. Can you give a sense of how many researchers you have and, and just kind of the scope of the work? Because it is it's pretty large. It is. We have about, I mean, it varies because people come and go in the center and how our funder accounts our, our researchers, but roughly 150 people. All right. And they're scattered across uh, 10 different institutions across Ireland. So it's not just at one university. And they're focused on pure climate change, atmospheric. We do a lot of work in the marine realm, offshore Ireland, but around the planet. We have people working in the Southern Ocean and the Pacific, et cetera. Uh, we're working on, on Ireland, on the ground itself, looking at our peatlands and their history and what's happening with CO2 uptake or CO2 release, <laughs> because both are happening. We're doing a lot of work on groundwater and how that's changing. One would think Ireland being very rainy, right, that we have no groundwater problem. We've actually had droughts here in Dublin in the last decade. And we're expecting more. And then people like me, I'm working on the metals and where do we get the materials that we actually use to go forward with some of these technologies. And we're working on the energy itself. So how do we actually put in wind offshore safely, right? And pr preserve the marine environment. So we're looking at the ecology of the 
of the seafloor, right? Which we people don't really understand offshore Ireland exactly what's off there. And solar, where can we do it? There's just so many questions. So our researchers are working on a whole bunch of these different things, plus pure science, just like, you know, also the history of the planet and how the glaciations affected the island, et cetera, which at first glance, you know, wouldn't think actually go into this debate, but again, they do. So you've shared a lot of great questions that, that come up as, as you know, Copernicus, other things we discovered, new things, your researchers discover new things. But is there a question that nobody is asking? So when I looked at your questions, this was the hardest one, right? And I thought about it. And it's actually the question you just asked. That is the question. So we have to really remain open to the fact that we do not understand everything, right? And that we're going to be surprised. <laughs> As a scientist, I mean, we just, you know, that's, that's what we do. So we have to embrace that we do not have the answers and that we face new questions. And we're going to have new questions and new answers coming from unexpected places continuously. Climate change, the change is important, right? Changes are going to be both ways, good, bad, different, and things that we don't expect. So it's also a real reason why we need diverse groups and voices thinking about and working on the problems. So I am really proud our researchers, you know, most of them are Europeans, <laughs> but we have researchers from all over the world in our group. And, and I think that's really important because, again, they're bringing experiences from different places, from different backgrounds, different histories that allow them to see something that I see in a very different way. No one person is going to get the answer, right? It's going to be a whole bunch of people closing in on answers. What are you most proud of to date with your scientific contributions? The center, I would say, before ICRAG existed in Ireland, geoscience in this country was was balkanized. So it was a whole bunch of individual people and individual research and, you know, universities doing their own little thing. ICRAG, our funder, Science Foundation of Ireland, by, by funding the center, actually forced all of us to come together to actually work on, if you want to call it, grand challenges, right? That actually was incredibly important and incredibly, I'm just really proud that that happened, right? Because I think it harnessed a huge amount of, of human energy in a way that was needed. And it was done really before the climate crisis completely over, overtook the island. So that's one. So myself, what am I most proud of? I think I, I have been successful in developing models and ways of thinking of and helping to discover resources of metals such as copper and cobalt that, that are used in the technologies we need. So, you know, I felt I've done my bit in actually helping to move things forward. And importantly, those places where those things have been found and produced, doing it in a way that's environmentally as, as good as we can, as sustainably as we can. Does something now today motivate you differently than it did in your 20s? Yes and no. So I do remember the first Earth Day. Okay? I was in high school. I helped organize you know, protests and marches in the high school for the first Earth Day. Really important. But that was the environment writ large. In the United States, we had rivers catching on fire. We had, you know, unbelievable air pollution, all that stuff. A lot of that's gone, right? We have other problems. But as I've grown and, and focused my research, I mean, now I'm much more focused on decarbonization, right? So it is this problem. How do I use my knowledge to help address that problem? So I guess I've focused myself through my, my career and my life. But the passion is still there, the same way. What challenge would you like to leave the listener from this conversation? So no matter what you do, try and help make the world a better place, period. It doesn't have to be climate. It can be climate. It can be all sorts of things. We need to actually understand our fellow citizens and how we all interact with the planet, right? Because we're all part of one place and, you know, we got to take care of it. And lastly here, if you had to describe your journey in one word, what would it be and why? Discovery. So from understanding how the planet Earth itself works and its history, which I find fascinating, right? Just intellectually really cool. But also 
how people interact with it. And to me, both these are just endlessly fascinating and rewarding. If people want to learn more about iCrag, is there a particular resource or a place you want to point them to? Our website's probably the simple, easiest way, and there's a whole bunch of documents that lead on from that if one wants to go through through that. Great. Well, we'll link to that. Murray, I appreciate your time for setting this up and enjoy the rest of your time in, in D.C. And, and hope you have safe travels back to Ireland. I'm sure we will. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you for listening to this episode of Seismic Sound Off. SEG creates these episodes to celebrate and inspire the geophysicists of today and tomorrow. Visit seg.org to learn more. Email the show at podcast at seg.org. This episode was hosted, edited, and produced by me, Andrew Gary, at Treasure Mint. The SEG podcast team is Jennifer Cobb, Kathy Gamble, 